Hello, this is Peter Stewart. Thank you for listening today. Uh, This is part of our series called Get A Better Broadcast Podcast and Voice Over Voice. Short daily tips on how to get just that. Today, contractions and lesions. I'm going to tell you how you can write a script so it sounds much more conversational when you read it. On Twitter, you can follow me. Tweeter Stewart, T W W E T E R S T E W A R T. So, yeah, it's not just how you sound, which is going to make you be much more conversational in your overall attitude and presentation style. It comes back to how you're writing, how you're writing that script in the first place, the words you use. We spoke about this a couple of three days ago, but also about how you say those words in the studio, in front of the microphone. You've got to ensure you've got a natural conversational contractions in your delivery. And that way your listeners will think that uh, you are just having a conversation. They'll imagine you sitting in front of them. They'll imagine you sitting in front of you. Not they will imagine you sitting in front. They'll. Yeah? They... It it, it it may be that they couldn't tell that you're speaking to thousands of people. Couldn't. Not. Could not. Yeah. So those kinds of tr- contractions, they'll rather than they will. Couldn't rather than could not. And if appropriate for your programme, your podcast, your audience, because I want you to understand that cause. Yeah. I want to be able to explain to you what the concept is for contractions and elisions. I wanna. Not I want to. Then obviously check with the director for signed off scripts that you can make these kinds of changes. Contractions and elisions is what we're talking about today in Get a Better Broadcast, Podcast and Voice Over Voice. So contractions where you're actually contracting two words together. Usually these are words which are written with an apostrophe, couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't, and that kind of thing. And elisions, where you're perhaps taking out more letters, you're combining maybe a couple of three words together. Maybe you're putting together a whole phrase. It's it's contracting, it's squeezing those words down to the constituent parts, sometimes almost uh, running words into each other. Now, we saw earlier, several months, months ago, didn't we? Uh, What I would suggest would be the middle of 2021's episodes, because these are daily podcasts, they've been going on for that long. We saw previously how a lesion makes a read sound more natural. So that's the slight running on of words into one another. It, it, It provides a less choppy presentation, rather than sounding each individual word. In English, we often don't say a word exactly as it's spelled. And and you know what, that's probably the same in other languages as well, because we want to sound natural and fluent for a way to make our read sound conversational, kind of every day of the week kind of a read. For instance, look back at that sentence that I've just read and look at it in the notes for today's show. Not everyone pronounces the T in often. So earlier on, a few moments ago, I said we don't often say a word exactly as it's spelled. Now, are you going to say often or often? Often sounds softer. It sounds more conversational, arguably, depending on your usual pronunciation of that word. I also use the word exactly. Hmm. Hardly anyone would say exactly, but smooth it out and say Exactly. It sounds more authentic. We are not likely to say and. Yeah. So a few moments ago, I said, because we want to sound natural and fluent, natural and fluent, not natural and fluent. Yeah. We're likely to say and or um rather than and. I mean, how do you say fish and chips? Fish and chips? No, fish and chips. You you run those three words together, fish and chips. Fora. Uh, uh, earlier on in that sentence was, because we want to sound natural and fluent for a way to make it for a way, for a, for a. We don't say for a, for a, for a way. Your, 
could be changed to yeah, yeah, to make your read conversational, to make your read not make your read. Do you see what I'm doing here? Yeah, we contracting, we slurring some of the words. That's quite a good word to use, perhaps not in a drunk alcoholic kind of way, but just make it sound much more natural, much more flowing, moving those words into one another. So your can be changed to year. Uh, every is every rather than every. Day of, likely day of, every, day of the week, day of the week, not day of the week. Kind of is more likely to be kind of. Like, do, do, you're getting this, yeah? It's slurring the words. It's not saying each individual word. We're using contractions and deletions to make ourselves sound much more conversational. So that's another thing to consider when you're going for that really authentic read that uh, you'll hear in the wild, in its natural state, when in fact you're sitting in a studio in front of a microphone and a window with people the other side and you're reading words off a piece of glass or a piece of dried wood pulp. OK, tomorrow in the show, the word merge as Get A Better broadcast, podcast and voice over voice continues. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. <laughs>